Well, the new throttle body showed up, and it's identical to the other one. So, I don't know what's real anymore. I just, whatever. I Are these people messing things up? I don't know. I mean, I pulled the throttle body off my car. Everything fit. Everything was going to work. So, I don't, I don't know. But, whatever. Don't care. Moving forward, I'm just going to use the spacer as a drill guide for the drill press and redrill the holes. And, yeah. We're just going to fucking send it. <laughs> So now we got it mostly together, figure I'll take a couple minutes and talk about the actual setup itself because I don't think we've actually touched on this yet. This is a 2 liter turbo EJ205 boxer engine out of a 2004 Subaru Impreza WRX. And starting at the top and working our way down, this is a top mount intercooler off of a 2012 STI. I'm running into the stock recirc valve, but I am venting it to atmosphere instead of recirculating it back to the turbo inlet since I'm running a map based tune rather than math based, so I don't have a need for it. Also, the 2012 intercooler is larger than the 04 WRX one, so the hose doesn't reach, and frankly, I don't feel like buying or making one. So, yes, we can change it up later, but it'll work for now. The throttle body is converted from a cable actuated unit to an electronic one. The turbo is a stock TDO4 for now, just to get it up and running and work through the kinks before we do attempt to eventually make more power. I did modify it though by welding the wastegate shut since I'm running an external one, and I ported the turbine inlet for an improved exhaust flow. Matching the stock turbo are the stock fuel injectors, which will let us run on a base map for testing, and feeding those injectors are these billet IAG fuel rails. More on the fuel system in an upcoming episode. The TGVs have had the valves, motors, and sensors deleted, and the housings ported and polished for improved airflow. I also think it cleans the engine up a bit. The turbo inlet is stock, however I blocked off all the ports since I won't need any. And speaking of blocked off ports, all but one of the intake manifold ports have been removed and blocked. I did save the one underneath the throttle body to feed the blow off valve and wastegate so it's still there. Everything under the timing cover is stock, albeit new and refreshed. I'm not running the power steering pump or air conditioning, so I just need to find a belt that fits the crank pulley and alternator. And last but certainly not least, the headers are unequal length to make units that I had port matched and wrapped, feeding a wrapped grim speed up plate and teal wastegate to round out the exhaust. So that's about it. If you do have any questions on the setup, uh, drop me a note in the comments or DM me, um, and I'll do my best to answer you. Okay, on with the show. <laughs>
So at some point the camera just stopped recording. I guess things weren't happening fast enough and it got bored. I don't know. I don't even care because I couldn't help myself. I went and threw the intercooler on this thing. <laughs> and this is the most this car has ever been together. And it is awesome. Dude, check this out. There's our exhaust dumping. Uh, this is just a scrap yard thing. Like when you get a when you get a junkyard engine, you usually come with like this cut off. Uh, downpipe, so that's all that is. I just cut the heat shielding and stuff off. Um, so obviously this is not going to be what we're going to be running. We're going to be tying in the external wastegate screamer pipe into the dump tube, and then it's going to come down and actually exit the car. Then we've got so the intercooler is just kind of sitting here. Um, it's it, it's not even like tightened down and, and it's not mounted. Um, here you can see the uh, blow off valve tube is going to come over here. We're going to have to route that down or something because that's going to be obnoxious. Um, most of the wiring reaches the rear bulkhead area, so that's awesome. Um, and most of those that don't reach are power, ground, um, and the injector and ignition signals. Um, so heavier gauge wire, so um, it's kind of nice. Everything's kind of bundled. So I think we're going to stick to the plan of having all our actuations on one plug, and then we're going to have all our sensors and signals on the other plug so um yeah we obviously nothing's actually like mounted and ran yet but here's what we got i couldn't help it uh starters in uh slave cylinders on uh clutches engaged um i decided not to put the axles in for now i just just in case <laughs> here's kind of a look underneath that's gonna be aggressive so now all that's really left is, not all that's really left, there's a lot left. <laughs> um, so what we have to do now is, I think the next step is going to be A, extending all those wires so they reach, and then B, building our package shelf tray thing here with our recessed ECU power distribution box. I think that's gonna be next. And then once we know we have those parts mounted, then we know how long everything needs to be. We can actually start terminating things and uh, figuring out our mil spec uh, connector situation. I'd call that a hell of a high note to end on, so that is exactly what we're gonna do. Thank you so much for watching. Next up, we're gonna be working on, well, more wiring, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, but as always, remember, on projects like this thing, sometimes you just need a little ingenuity. I will see you next time.